Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Faze Row Media. Welcome to my new studio. I cannot wait to give you guys a tour for my new home. This video is all about Zoom webinars, okay? So we have a separate video to talk about the regular Zoom meeting. And you may be wondering, Zoom webinar, what is it for? When should I really need it or use it? Because it does cost $40 extra. Now, I want to explain to you step by step how to evaluate whether Zoom webinar is the right thing for you in the next minute. Then beyond that, I want to show you step by step how to set up your first Zoom webinar like a pro. The most important feature, in my opinion, are the email reminders. Have you noticed that when you set up a regular meeting, whether it's Zoom or otherwise, people don't always show up? Is it because that they were not available, they changed their mind? No, as it turn out that people need reminders, okay? Let's talk about the best practices of these email reminders, and then I'm gonna show you exactly how to set them up, which is you want to remind your attendees at least one week before the meeting, then one day before the start time. Last but not least, one hour, okay? So some people even argue for the digital marketers who are really worried or concerned about conversion, they will add an extra, which is text reminders, 10 to 15 minutes before the meeting start time. I would definitely recommend you leverage Zoom webinars, email reminders. So let's get started setting it up. Hey, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Restream an application you can use to allow you to go live everywhere on 30 plus social media platforms. Now back to today's video. All right, let's talk about how you can set up your Zoom webinar right here. Once you purchase Zoom webinar, you're gonna see an additional menu option right here called webinars. Once you click on that, you will see three tabs here. You have upcoming, previous, and webinar templates. Now, templates can be very useful if you are planning on running similar webinars moving forward, then all your settings can be saved so you do not have to create everything from scratch. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to start scheduling a webinar for you uh, and from scratch so you can see exactly how I do this like a pro. So first, click on the blue button, schedule a webinar. Now you'll notice this looks very, very similar to how you schedule a regular Zoom meeting. So let's go ahead and say my webinar, and this is my description. Obviously, you should include as much detail as possible. Then you're going to set a time. So I'm gonna set a time that's literally minutes away from when I'm recording this, duration, and check it out. You can actually set the time zone here for that. So it's defaulted to where I am, which is Eastern time. You can make a webinar recurring. So this can be very helpful if it's at a set time. And look, so you can repeat the meeting on a daily, weekly, monthly, or no fixed time. So no fixed time is kind of interesting too. Uh, that means you can actually reuse the webinar as needed. So the most common one that people are using uh, is weekly. So as you can see, you can repeat every week, you can repeat every two weeks, um, and you can set the time. And you can also let it expire either uh, by a certain date or after a number of occurrences. One thing I want to call out is currently there's no way to schedule recurring meetings at different times of the week. For example, Tuesday at 10 a.m. and Friday at 2 p.m. recurrently for a number of weeks. Registration can be required or not required. Um, to be honest, I actually do recommend that you turn this on because for webinars, it helps the attendees uh, to register for the event. And then from here, for people who are registered, they will automatically receive these reminders, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a second. Now let's take a look at registration. Attendees register once, can attend any of the occurrences, or they can register for each occurrence to attend or they need to register for each occurrence to attend or attendees register once and they can choose one or more occurrences. So this is really up to you and to you know, what you need. Webinar passcode, this is automatically turned on, so just keep it there. Now videos uh, for hosts and panelists, I typically have them turned on because again, think about the type of events I've been running for fitness and for music. So it's important that these performers and hosts are able to show their faces and they're all quite comfortable doing that. Audio, again, leave everything as defaulted to people can connect to audio, both through telephone and computer audio. 
Now, the webinar options are very interesting. So Q&A means that you allow people to ask you questions. I like this feature in the webinar meeting because not only people can drop questions, I, as a facilitator, as a host, I can also moderate that by checking things off. You're able to see questions and you're able to check, you know, I've addressed this in the meeting and move on to the next one. Another option I really like is enable practice session. Now, this one is very helpful, especially for musical, you know, concerts and shows and things that you might want to connect with your guests prior to going live. Now, this can also be helpful if this is a, you know, interview based webinar. Um, a lot of us podcasters and content creators don't really have the time ahead of uh, the scheduled webinar to connect with our guests. If that's the case, you definitely want to be able to uh, enable the practice session and you'll be able to see a banner. In terms of the third option, I don't usually check this, only allow authenticated users to join because uh, my webinars are usually high tech, you know, people are not trying to crash into them. Plus they're all password protected. Therefore I feel pretty safe and just keeping them, you know, to any users. And last but not least, automatically record webinar. You have the option to do that directly on your local computer or in the cloud. This is up to you. Um, so I won't say too much about that. Alternative hosts, you will have to pay for an additional person to be an alternative host. Otherwise, um, I will not be able to just add a random email and expect that person to host a webinar with me. The last option, this requires enabling of your webinar um, settings, which means you can enable language interpretation. This is such a fascinating feature. Uh, there is also a very helpful video already on YouTube, but I do plan on creating one uh, of my own. So with all that said, let's just go ahead and schedule this meeting. Now, once I schedule the meeting, you can see that as a host, I can immediately add it to my calendar, Google Calendar, Outlook, Yahoo, and I can see the webinar ID. And now what I want to do is pretend to be an attendee register so you can see the registration link and all the previous sessions, uh, all the previous selections are already here. Now uh, to invite somebody as a panelist, let me explain real quick. A panelist is someone who's able to interact live with you during the webinar. So that person's able to, you know, share screen. If you give them the option to it can definitely connect these uh, panelists can definitely turn on off their webcam. Uh, they can mute and mute themselves. So they're just like, you know, participants from a regular Zoom meeting. And it's important, I think, for Zoom to use a new verbiage or a new role uh, called panelists to separate them from the webinar attendees. So let me go ahead and, and to add someone, all you have to do is click on this edit button right here. I'm going to just go ahead and add myself. So one moment. So here you have the choice to either send invitation to all newly added panelists or, you know, or towards the end uh, when you're all done. So what I like to do is just to send the invitation right away, even if that means I might add 10 people over the course of three days, I want people to get their invite right away. So click on send. Now you can see that the panelists are now appearing, even just one person, just me appearing under the invite panelist list. And some additional features here you might find helpful as a host to come in. You can copy the invite or send the invitation to me uh, in case people are requesting that. Let's take a look at email settings here. I think it, this is huge. Do it the right way. So by default, uh, everything here, invitation email to panelists. Okay, that all looks good. Uh, now confirmation email to registrants send upon registration. That's also cool. There's a preview uh, email you can take a look at. Look, this is a webinar confirmation. Again, looks very much like a regular Zoom meeting. Coming back to the webinar setting under email setting, the most important things are right here. Right now it says by default, no reminder email to attendees and panelists, no follow up emails to attendees. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes what I do is you know, I will uh, edit these and, and I typically manage my follow up emails using my convert kit, my email marketing um, service. So the most important thing is what I'm highlighting here. No reminder emails to attendees and panelists. You want to change this by clicking on edit. And I highly, highly recommend that you check all three things one hour, one day, one week before the webinar start date and time. Now I know some of you guys are scheduling the meeting much closer to the event time. So you might not even need the one week before the webinar start, but if you do, you really want it, right? 
the farther away the webinar is, the more likely it is for people to forget about it. So with all these reminders, how could you possibly uh, imagine or expect high conversion rate to people who remember to show up? So these are the templates and I don't recommend you necessarily need to change them. I think they work just fine as is. So I'm going to click on save. Hey guys, I hope you found this video helpful. And again, to learn more about Zoom webinar, simply go to zoom.us forward slash webinar. And there are plans and pricing information and there's pricing information uh, right here. So by the way, if you're not sure if Zoom webinar is the right thing for you, then what I would normally do is I'll just get the monthly subscription without ever getting the annual one when you're not sure. I hope you keep growing your audience and whatever you're doing online is just so exciting. Best of luck. I'm going to create more videos also on the on Zoom marketplace. So uh, make sure you check it out. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button because I'm going to see you next time. Mwah.